But I'm here to talk about a different, very different sort of institution, not, not the kind of legal or organisational uh, institution that you might think of, but indicators. Um, and as you'll see, what I really mean by this is headline political indicators. Um, because uh, in our work with the New Economics Foundation, these are an absolutely vital tool to get us to first of all measure and then crucially to focus on the long term um, in the politics and policy making today that we need so vitally if we are going to achieve these goals for future generations. Um, very quickly, for those of you who don't know us, um, the New Economics Foundation is a London-based, politically independent think tank. And we see our mission as to help kickstart the move into a new economic system that will treat social justice, social justice well-being and environmental sustainability as its key goals. Um, so in, in these few minutes that I've got with you here, I'm going to try and explain why we think headline indicators matter so much. Um, and I'm going to base that on three, three key reasons. And this is drawing on much of uh, the work we carried out as part of the Brain Pool project, which was a EU-funded consortium project really thinking about how <coughs> headline indicators can be used um, to go beyond GDP. So um, I think that headline indicators are important, first of all, because they frame our understanding of issues. This is what Brain Pool called the conceptual use. Second, they provide information about those issues which are subject to policy decisions, the instrumental use. And the key thing about this is that when that information is widely communicated and high profile, it therefore provides strong incentives for political action. Essentially, the indicators are used to judge the success or otherwise of, of the politicians and others delivering on the goals that the indicators represent. And thirdly, indicators are used to justify political decisions which are often taken for other reasons, and this is what Brain Pool calls the political use. I'm not going to say too much more about this one, but it is interesting to bear in mind the question, what sorts of actions might one indicator be able to justify in comparison with another? Um, so I am going to say a bit more now first about these first ideas of framing. Um, so to say a bit more about what this means, and I'm going to quote, quote one of the key proponents of framing, George Lakoff. He's got a lovely summary here. He says, the first basic result in the science of framing is that the meaning of every word is characterised in terms of a brain circuit called a frame. Frames are characterised in terms of the usual apparatus of mental life, metaphors, images, cultural narratives, and neural links, the emotion centres of the brain. So the narrow, literal meaning of a word is only one aspect of its frame semantic meaning. The second basic result is that this is mostly unconscious, like 98% of human thought. The key point here is that words and symbols have deep, unconscious meanings, and it absolutely would include headline indicators in that. And, that and, and here's a bit more on why it's relevant to headline indicators. This is a quote from Ed Diener and Martin Seligman, two of the leading proponents for well-being measurement, and they said this in 2004, but I think you'll agree it, you re absolutely recognise it still today. Economics now reigns unchallenged in the policy arena, as well as in media coverage of quality of life indicators. News magazines and daily newspapers have a section devoted to money. Economists hold prominent positions in the capitals of the world. When politicians run for office, they speak at length about what they will do or have done for the economy. Rarely do the news media report on how the press engaged or satisfied people are. So the constant barrage that we get of headline economic indicators frame how we think about political goals and success. And of course, there's a problem with this. It's much too narrow and short term in its focus. And um, as Robert Kennedy famously and beautifully explains in my third quote here, his quote that gross national product counts air pollution and cigarette advertising and the destruction of the redwood and the loss of our natural wonder in chaotic sprawl. It does not allow for the health of our children, the quality of their education or the joy of their play. Or the beauty of our poetry or the strength of our marriages, it measures everything in short except that which makes life worthwhile. So in order to move away from the narrow short-term framing that we get from these headline economic businesses, we're going to need a better set of headline indicators. And we also need them <coughs> to provide a better set of incentives for our politicians. 
Um, and here's an example of a politician responding to current political incentives. For those who don't know, this is our current Chancellor in the UK, at least for the next week, George Osborne. <laughs> and in, in, du during his tenureship in that role, he has said, we're not going to save the planet by putting our country out of business. And he's talked about the burden of endless social and environmental goals. Now, why is he saying these things? Well, he, I, in my analysis, he's responding to the, the current incentives he feels that he's got to deliver on economic goals above all else, because that's what he's going to be judged on. And that's represented by the primary place of economics indicators in our politics and our media. And he, clearly, he has the perception that by focusing on other goals, that represents a threat to those headline economic goals. So what might we do to help? get out of this, this country. The model um, that, that George Osborne, I think, is broadly responding to here looks something like this, and again, this is drawn from our brain pool work. This is the idea that economic policies, which are designed to improve key economic indicators like GDP, represent well-being as seen by economic departments. And they happen broadly in parallel with a whole range of other policies, which are designed to improve progress on social and environmental indicators which lead to well-being as understood by other policy departments. Um, the key problem with these two things being in parallel is that when there are trade-offs and conflicts, as there inevitably are, the economic indicators are seen to trump the others in all cases. What the idea of headline indicators going beyond GDP aims to do is to integrate these processes so that both types of indicators are used to judge any given policy intervention. Now this leads to the possibility that you might implement a policy that doesn't improve your headline in head economic indicators because it does lead to other improvements. And if, but if the judgment that, that that combination is better for well-being either now or in the future, then that's a, legi a legi legitimate uh, course of policy. Um, and I think that, that's the best summary really of, of why those of us who worry about and think and, and uh, try and influence, I think, we're definitely in the influencing category on indicators, do that. And of course there have been lots of recent initiatives which have tried to um, suggest alternative headline sets of indicators, not least the work that's happening here in Wales in terms of um, producing a set of national indicators uh, for the, the goals that are about to be enshrined in the Future Generation, the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. Um, we're also having a go ourselves at next. Um, we're currently leading um, a project across UK civil society, which is really sort of in reaction to the work that our Office for National Statistics have been doing on their measuring national wellbeing programme over the last five years. They've been doing some really useful work, but our analysis is that they failed to come up with a small set of headline indicators that can really break through um, all the noise of endless statistics and, and start getting real political traction. So we're currently working on something to make a proposal together with many others across civil society. So in the workshop that I'll be running um, this afternoon, I'm going to um, invite you to help us in our thinking with this. I'm going to share a bit of uh, the initial research and thinking we've been doing and encourage conversations to answer sorts of questions like how to develop and apply criteria for selecting domains and indicators how an indicator set can gain democratic legitimacy, how to take account of those existing Premier League indicators that already get the lion's share of attention, and how to develop an effective narrative and set of communications around the indicators. Um, and I will look forward to discussing that with those of you in the session. <laughs>